And so next up, podcast listeners, the thing that makes disorder worse is the inflation tax. So get this. In the Wall Street Journal, the editorial board wrote an editorial titled The Inflation Tax on Workers. The article reads as follows. Well, that was ugly. Inflation in June roared to its highest mark to date this year, rising 1.3% for the month and 9.1% over 12 months. This means greater declines in real wages and more Federal Reserve tightening that is likely to hit asset prices. No wonder Americans are in a sour mood. The price increases were broad-based. As the Bureau of Labor Statistics put it, especially for food and energy. I'm pretty sure y'all have seen that. The price index for food at home rose 1% for the month, the sixth month in a row that had 1% or more inflation, and 12.2% for the past year. So for the past year in the United States of America, food now costs 12.2% more today than it did one year ago. Energy prices rose 7.5% in the month. That's one month, 7.5%, one month. So the article continues, and I'm not going to find it necessary to read the rest of the article because inflation is a tax. Inflation is the result of disorder. And disorder occurs when you have a government that doesn't understand how inflation causes even more disorder. So I'd like to explain this. We already have a country that's divided, right? We're divided politically. We have eco-warriors who are deciding to attack your private property. We have people who are trying to turn your child into a transgender in public school and then not telling you that they're trying to cancel, counsel your child to become a transgender in school. I mean, this is all happening. So we have the cultural wars happening and people are already divided. And then in addition to that, we have the inflation tax. If you look throughout history, world history, there is nothing that causes a society to fail more than economic turmoil. And inflation is just the recipe. So disorder is going to just begin. And I want to make this perfectly clear to my friends out there on the left and right. I do not support disorder, okay? That is, that's not where I'm going with this. It's the opposite. I am warning you, it's the opposite. I'm warning you instead that disorder is about to come because you cannot have people losing their standard of living, finding it necessary to spend more and more just to keep even, spending their savings, not getting raises, losing property, um, losing their standard of living, and that without having people starting to riot, without ha having people going in and doing mass thievery, without, I mean, look, folks, this has happened throughout world history. And in the United States of America, I think we primarily have a population that is not very tolerant of hard times. I mean, sorry, we call this show Mark of the Millennials, but a lot of millennials have never experienced hard times. The generations that have followed the millennials, even worse. And so what happens when you have difficult times and you can no longer afford the things that you could once afford? For example, well, you were used to going on vacation twice a year and hopping on a plane. Now you cannot do that. You cannot go on vacation twice a year. You can only go on vacation once a year and not on a plane to go somewhere. Instead, you have to drive to the place. Um, okay, that's the high class problem. Then there's the other problem, which is, you were able to feed your family, and now you cannot. You're, you were able to buy, you know, groceries that were well balanced, and your family was well fed, and now you're buying more and more carbs. Um, or you were always living hand to mouth, and now you can't survive at all. Why wouldn't you think, podcast listeners, that there wouldn't be disorder? Why wouldn't you think that people wouldn't start rioting, or, you know, start um, attacking private property, start stealing things. Why wouldn't thievery increase? That is the point that I'm making. 
the Democrat Party, the party that has defunded the police, the party that has disrespected the police, the party that continues to say that police are the problem, have created an economic situation that is so dangerous that when people, because no longer if, when people begin to realize how bad the economy actually is affecting them, they're going to think, well, the Democrats said it's okay to, to steal because they've defunded the police. So let's just create bedlam and do that. And folks, this is how societies and civilizations are brought down. It is. It's exactly how societies, and that's why I found it necessary to talk about this inflation tax, because it is. It is a political party that has caused this tax called inflation. And it's the Democrat Party. They've caused it primarily in energy prices, which, of course, first and foremost, affects food. And they've caused scarcity across our economy. Case in point, you know the baby formula shortage? Well, also in the Wall Street Journal, do you realize it's still occurring? It's still continuing? So there's a baby formula shortage, ladies and gentlemen. The shortage is, the shortage is actually deepening. It's worsening. And the replenishment efforts of baby formula have been insufficient. So there's a picture in the Wall Street Journal of a cabinet in a grocery store full of baby formula, yet it's all locked up. In other words, people have been stealing the baby formula. And so the stores have found it necessary to put it under lock and key. That's the ultimate in disorder. That's what happens when Democrats are in charge. You don't have sufficient supply for the demand. You have inflation. And then with baby formula, it's just simply the fact that the Democrats didn't even see this crisis coming, shut down some of the formula manufacturers. And, you know, because the big companies are really bad. And now you have people in the cities ripping off the grocery stores with baby formula. So they have to put it under lock and key. Can you imagine going into your grocery store? This is coming soon, brought to you by the Democrats. Going into the grocery store and going down the bread aisle and all the bread is in locks. It's under locks and keys behind, you know, glass cages or or just cages, like metal cages. And there's a lock on it. You can't put your hand through the cage. You have to, like, push a button. And someone that works there at the grocery store has to come over and unlock it for you and uh, and scan scan your credit card or or what have you before they even will give you the bread. That's where we're going with this. So the U.S. stores are still struggling to stock baby formula despite months long effort by manufacturers and the Biden administration to boost supplies. Availability of powdered formula products in U.S. stores earlier this month dropped to the lowest level so far this year, with about 30% of the products out of stock for the week. (laughs) 30% out. While availability improved slightly last week, out-of-stock levels remain higher than in recent months. And shortages remain acute in states like Alaska, Utah, and Wyoming, the IRA data showed. Hmm. (laughs) Red states. At the same time, consumers are finding fewer choices of brands, sizes, or formats of formula on grocery store shelves. So this is why I actually have to ask the question. It's my understanding that the left doesn't like baby formula because of climate change. Like some of the baby formula they don't like because... It's milk-based, you know, um, I believe. And so I have to wonder if maybe the reason some of those brands have been attacked over time by the Biden administration and there are limit, limited supplies is because they're trying to shut down certain kinds of baby formula that don't meet their climate agenda. Now, I don't know this for sure, but it's, cer- it's certainly worth asking the question. And so... In the Wall Street Journal comments section about inflation and baby formula and the disorder situation across America, we have some comments in here, and it's really worth reading some of these. Um, Here's one from William Kramer. I just randomly chose this. It's not even marked off. It says, let's see. 
stop the oil pipeline, reduce drilling on public lands, and then add trillions of dollars to the economy, and nobody saw inflation coming? Either DC did it on purpose, or DC is really stupid. Or I'm just really smart, but I don't think so. <laughs> now, it just like randomly shows that article. You should see it one after another. Another, Justin Nichols. I'm heading out for a taco with a few of my Hispanic friends. <laughs> it's diverse taco. And that's making fun of Jill Biden, of course, because Jill Biden, as you might suspect, made a really stupid comment the other day in uh, at one of her speeches where she called them taco something. Didn't she? It's like. She's the term taco to refer to refer to yeah, Hispanics. I mean, imagine a Republican doing that. And of course, the media is like completely quiet other than maybe Fox News, you know, but CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, etc. Nothing. No comments. So we have to understand something. When you have inflation at the level that we have, and this is really the takeaway, and you have a shortage at the same time of certain essential products like baby formula, you are going to have massive disorder. You're going to have more stores like 7-Eleven and Starbucks closing and many more stores from many other chains closing. I'll just use those two as, as examples. And then you're going to have more extremism. And you're going to have more people pitted against one another. And you're going to have civil disorder, which results in the fall of a society and the fall of a civilization, which we do not want, okay? I don't want it and you don't want it, which is why it's so important that we elect people this November who actually understand how an economy works and understand that we live in a free country and you get to decide what kind of SUV you drive and what kind of food you feed your child and what kind of food you feed yourself, what kind of clothes you wear, what kind of house you live in, what kind of car you get to drive, Period.